Ryan. Mike Bollinger, how hey, are you, man. my friend? Good to see you. Good to see you too, dude. Thanks for having me, man. Oh, of course. Thanks for giving us the time of day, dude. Yeah, absolutely. Before we get into the nitty gritty, do you mind telling the audience about your military experience? Yeah, no, I, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I was in the um, army for five years. Um, I got out in 2019. Um, for the five years, I was in uh, 1st Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment. Um, two combat deployments. Uh, it was a great time. I, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Heck yeah, love it. So, you mind telling us how you got here to Columbia University? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, um, I had a lot. I had a few Ranger buddies that had gotten out before me, uh, and they they ended up coming here up here to Columbia. Um, and so, you know, word of mouth started getting around, and you know, I kind of contacted them, and you know, found out about School of General Studies, um, and found out that you know they really like veterans. Uh, I've, I, I heard that Columbia has more veterans than all the other Ivy League schools, you know. And so uh, I, I never thought really much of it, whether it was in the cards for me or not. But uh, so I just talked to them about the process, ended up applying, uh, you know, found a few resources online that could help me out. And uh, I ended up getting in. Nice. Uh, yeah. So did you do community college or any other academic pursuit before applying to Columbia? No, actually, um, I, I had like a one nine in high school. Uh, you know, part part of the reason I joined the military, uh, not the whole reason. You know, I, I really, you know, it was definitely something I wanted to do. But um, you know, I, I didn't really think college was like in the cards for me, and I, I didn't even really think about going to community college or anything like that nice. uh, before coming up here. So you just laid into some resources, wrote some good essays. Next yeah. thing you know, you go from Ranger Bat to Columbia University. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I got out. Uh, I got out um, of Ranger Bat in uh, April of 2019. Um, I ended up attending a program, Warrior Scholar Project, uh, as you know, um, in that summer, and which was a good, you know, just kind of crash course prep for me coming out here. And then mm -hmm. that fall, I, I started Columbia. So I had about three months between getting out and starting up here. Heck yeah. So if for anyone in the military community that's watching this right now, would you yeah. recommend they take a similar path that you did? Look up your resources, lay into them a bit, find yeah. stuff like Warrior Scholar, Service to School, Next Step Inbound, anything like that? Yeah, no, absolutely. I. Um, one of the things I tell a lot of vets that are coming up here, you know, I've talked to a few of my friends uh, before they got out mm -hmm. and that are now currently here at Columbia. I got a few buddies up at Harvard um, and, you know, a few other schools around the country, uh, Georgetown as well. But, uh, you know, I talked to them and one of the things that uh, I really try to stress is that there are so many resources out there. And yeah, you do, uh, the Army, we call it SFL TAP, but it's like the, the program you have to go through yeah, before you get out. Where they like, they kind of yeah. give you some like here's and there's and whatnot. Yeah, here's how to write a yeah, resume. Yeah, exactly, here's a resume. But like, I really didn't find any of those things super useful for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but after just finding out uh, like things about the Warrior Scholar Project, service to school, there was a few Ranger specific programs that I use as well. Yep. But like just doing a little bit of that research and that due diligence and finding out those programs, it saved me a ton of stress and a, and a ton of time on the back end. Nice. Uh, I absolutely would recommend that to anybody. Awesome. One of the biggest issues that a lot of veterans face when they get out of the military is that innate loss of community. You mm -hmm. know, you all wear the cloth of your country. You are all a part of a unit. There is some cohesiveness there, yeah. whether or not you recognize it. Um, so that being said, how do you think you found community here at Columbia? Yeah. I. Um, that was a huge worry for me. Uh, was getting out and like coming and coming to a school where I didn't really have any connection with anybody. Mm -hmm. Trying to rebuild, um, uh, you know, friend groups. But like, how could I be connected, as connected to somebody at college as I was, you know, in a squad uh, back, you know, back on the line. Um, and so one of the reasons I came to Columbia was because of how many veterans were here, and I thought that that would be kind of a good transition. Uh, there's also the, the Mill Vets um, organization, which I believe is the second largest student body organization on campus, that uh, it's a really good way to connect with the other veterans and things like that. Um, one of the things I also found useful was um, connecting with people that weren't veterans, uh, and that, that really helped me out as far as like the transitioning process yep. and you know kind of getting outside of that. I think you can, some some vets get out and they're like, I want nothing to do with the military, yeah. and so they completely isolate, which I don't think is uh, extremely helpful, And uh, but some vets go the exact other way mm -hmm. where they only associate with other veterans, yeah. which I don't think is helpful either. You know, I found a, a good part of both, but honestly, just being an active participant in my education, being an active participant at uh, Columbia, you know, uh, 
looking at the resources that Milvets offers and you know going to a few of the uh, group stuff there. I've I, I've made some of the best friends that I, I think I'll have for the rest of my life here. Heck yeah, I love it. So. You just mentioned that you found community outside of the military community on yeah. campus here. You mind telling the audience about some of the ways that you went about doing that? Um, so the at Columbia School of General Studies, it's not only veterans. Uh, oddly enough, we have uh, there's a ton of ballerinas that go here, uh, which is crazy, like almost as much as veterans. Uh, but you know, there's also a ton of other people with crazy stories. Schools of General Studies is uh, for those that don't know. Um, any non-traditional students, um, so people that have backgrounds prior to this and uh, prior to coming to Columbia. And it's just really cool to, um, you know, being in Milvets, you, you kind of, but being in GS, you kind of are integrated with them anyway. You're going to see them in your classes. You have the GS lounge. Uh, some of your other veteran friends are going to have friends that aren't vets, so you'll meet them. Uh, in any case, like you're, you're, you're very well, you're, you're integrated uh, with that community a lot. And so it's easy to kind of make friends and meet those, uh, those people. And, uh, it's just cool to hear their stories and, uh, how they got to where they are as well, because, uh, what's, what's cool about it is you just find a lot of similarities between the veteran community and let's say the community that the ballerinas have, you yeah. know? Absolutely. So that being said, have you been a part of any other organizations on campus outside of Milvets, or are you kind of just a social butterfly in your own campus community here? Um, my first semester here, I really wanted to be uh, like take an active role uh, in my education mm -hmm. in the process here. Uh, so I ended up um, becoming president of a, a club called CU Fed, Columbia University Fitness, uh, where me and a few other people were doing just group workouts with some people, just trying mm -hmm. to promote better fitness, whatnot. And that that wasn't only associated with the Milvets, it was, you know, kind of uh, just any students as a whole. Uh, you know, we had uh, one of the ballerinas I mentioned, uh, she was a yoga instructor. She ended up doing some yoga classes for us, stuff like that. Nice. And that that kind of helped uh, me branch out, meet other uh, other people in the community. But also, um, like GSSC and Milvets are very closely integrated. Yep. So um, whenever you do a Milvets event, um, you know usually you'll have some GSSC or vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, GSSC is the General Studies um, Student Council, so like the the student body of General Studies. Um, and so, yeah, it was, uh, I, I am pretty social. I am mm -hmm. an extrovert by nature, so uh, it is nice for me to get out, but yeah. Cool. So that being said, I, I know you just mentioned that you're an extrovert, but would you still recommend that those who may be more introverted or apprehensive to dive into new communities or, you know, make new friends still try and put them, take themselves out of their comfort zone and, you know, try something new? I absolutely I think uh, I think you can kind of uh, there's something for everybody here mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends that are I have a lot of really close friends that are introverts not extroverts yeah. like me that are still friends uh, have a ton of friends here and stuff like that I don't think it's um, I don't think it's uh, very hard uh, if you are let's say you are introverted and mm -hmm. you know, you're not as a, a social outgoing or whatever I think um, there's still plenty of ways for you to come here and, and get exactly you know what you want out cool. of this. Um, I want to shift gears here to yeah. some academic related questions. Yeah, so yeah. one of the biggest challenges I personally have seen enlisted veterans face when coming to a university such as this or well, any institution of higher learning is that the military is a culture of confrontation. You are, you know, standing stalwart against the adversaries of the United yeah. States. But you're going from a culture of confrontation to a culture of exploration in academia. Mm -hmm. So in your experience, how did you shift from that culture of confrontation, that culture of exploration academically? Because I've heard about how you did this socially, but yeah. now I want to hear about how you found your path academically. Uh, yeah. Uh, so one of the hardest <laughs> things that I, I actually struggled with coming to Columbia was uh, how like ambiguous some of the assignments can be. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, you know, coming from the military, you want everything to be structured, you know, yep. you know, right place, right uniform, right time. Mm -hmm. That's like all you need to do. And, um, you know, the, they give you the, the standard and that's what you meet. And mm -hmm. a, a lot of the classes I've had here at Columbia, um, sometimes uh, I've had a final that was make your own final, you know, and it's like, do whatever you want to do to show. And I, he said somebody had made a painting or somebody had written a song or somebody had done an essay, like a screenplay or something like that. Yeah. And I'm like, and I was kind of frozen with that. And I had to, I had to really kind of get out of that military mindset of needing structure to be yep. there to do well. Um, it, you know, as far as like the exploration part of it, um, I had, I think I came into it with, uh, 
um, a mindset of I'm excited to um, like whatever class I'm gonna take, I'm really excited to learn it. Like I get it. I'm in a I'm in a Game of Thrones class right now. Um, you that know, class and it's is a awesome. wonder it's yep. a wonderful class. And like uh, it sounds uh, it sounds preposterous. Yep. You know when you say it out loud, but um, you know it's actually a really fun class, and you're learning a lot of really cool stuff in that class. Is it still in the Spider Man classroom too? It's not. It's a uh, it's in the um, le- the 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 cinema room mm. learner. Mm, I don't, well, I don't know if you know this, well, th- or the audience might know this, but yeah. Spider Man Two had a scene that was filmed in a classroom here on campus and that Game of Thrones class when I took it was, was in, in there. that class yeah, yeah. so I, I felt extra connected to yeah media and I'm whatnot. somewhat of a scientist myself yeah. yes uh, exactly yeah. <laughs> so so uh, <laughs> speaking of scientists yeah. uh, you're a computer science major right yeah, yeah yeah cool so how'd you find that path um I ended up taking um, like a kind of introductory CS course before I got out uh, just kind of on a whim and mm-hmm. I ended up really liking it um and i was like you know i think i want this to be my major heck yeah uh and so i got to columbia and i kept liking it i was like eventually like it might maybe it's going to be hard at columbia Mm -hmm. you know and i'm not going to like it anymore and i got through my first class and my second class and i was like i actually love this uh and it was it was you know it's very uh cool thing when i i I feel like i've had a path since i got here Mm -hmm. uh you know uh i've had a buddy that kind of didn't know what he wanted to do when he got here and found it later but it's a really cool thing when you get to take all of these classes and you find something that you really love to do nice and that for me was cs nice so what do you think the logical conclusion of that is where do you want to take computer science so i I would really love to be a software engineer um i'm actually uh i interned for amazon over the summer oh awesome Uh, tell us about it thank you i uh i loved it it was it was awesome i had a great team it's a great it was a great company uh, to be at, I got the full time master when I graduate. Congratulations! Thank you. I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be starting there, which is a breath of fresh air. And uh, the craziest part about it is, I uh, you know we started this conversation. You know, I got a one nine in high school. Yeah. I didn't think I'd go to college. Now I'm here at Columbia, and then now I'm going to Am- like yeah, what, exactly. what the hell happened? You know? Yeah, dude. It's like you're not even done with college. Yeah. And you 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 have finished it. Like yeah. You're you're at the the finish line, and now it's just and there's something yeah. waiting on the other side of that too. Awesome. You know. Uh, I know by the way I, I, I had said you know like I had a buddy here that came in and he kind of didn't know what he wanted to do he thought he knew what he wanted to do and I've talked to a lot of my friends that mm-hmm. were still in that said like oh I'd get out but I just don't know what I do yeah and uh, he uh, he was kind of like that but he did get out and he did come here and then uh, his junior year found out what he really loved was journalism and now he's uh, he interned for Red Bull, writing about F1 over the summer, and he's got a full time he's got a full time offer away from on the Do other side. Do you know side. if they're hiring? I I don't personally, <laughs> but like I guess my point there is is like a lot of vets I think don't realize yeah. that you can do anything. Exactly. And my buddy found out he loves journalism two years before he got out, and now he's about to go work for Red Bull. Dude, that's so and cool. It's it's amazing. I'm yeah. a huge F1 nerd, so like that's hitting home with me. And <laughs> yeah. Like I, I really want to stay on topic here, but I'm like, mm. <laughs> uh, no, that's awesome though, dude. So if. Uh, you know, th- this is going to be watched by members of the, the military community, yeah. right? So uh, your your story here is a compelling one. You know, there, there's probably going to be some E4 who's thinking about getting out of the military who sees your story, and you know, they're like, "What if?" Yeah. So if if you could say something to that E4, that E3, that E7 who did 20 years but still wants to get out and go to college, what would you say to them? Yeah. So I know that's really broad, but like, no, it I don't is, know, man. Is, it's a broad question, but it, I mean, it, it is valuable because uh, I think a lot of people, they don't leave the military because it's familiar. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you have, you have, you're structured, you have a, you have a job, you have a paycheck, you have a place to live, you have something to eat, you know what you're doing every day. Um, but I mean, none of us joined the military because it was familiar. Yeah. You know, we all left our hometown. We all, we all took that leap and tried to do something bigger. Um, veterans here are some of the most successful, uh, bright, uh, engaging people that I've ever met in my entire life. And I think one of the things that separates them is just the, um, I mean, just by proxy of us being veterans, like, you know, we can take on a challenge and, and produce results. And for that E4 that it was like me, where it's like, you know, I didn't do well in high school. Like, how the hell could I go to an Ivy League school or, or whatever school you really want to go to? It's like, it, it, 
you you can't like you're gonna like you, veterans have proven it time and time again they're gonna be successful you're gonna do well you're gonna be at the top of the pack you're gonna you're gonna come through and it's a hard and it's a struggle but like i just um I don't know, man. It's you. Uh, it's hard to see from the inside, but nope. once you get out, the the margin for success is so high. Oh yeah, I love it, dude. Love yeah. it. Hell yeah. Damn, man. I'm so st- like, I, I I know I'm going off script here, but dude, I'm no, just no, no. so stoked right now that you, you've got like a gig at Amazon and we're like chilling on an Ivy League. That's what I'm lawn. saying. Like, like, dude, I, like, look at this background and crap and like. I, I don't, I don't even. Know. Yeah, dude, I, it's it's like that thing in freaking hot ones where like Paul Rod's like, look at us, man. Yeah, who, who would have thought it? We made it. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, I, but that's like, what I'm saying. Is it seems so surreal. And yeah. I, one of the things, I mean, you worked at WSP. I worked at WSP. Um, one of the things that we we deal with a lot and we talk to a lot of vets about is that imposter syndrome. Yeah, dude. And it hits me every day. Even at my Amazon internship, yep. I have the internship and I have imposter syndrome yep. that I'm there. You know, like, dude. and it's it's it honestly it like kind of just lives like it's 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 been uh it's one of the hardest things that i've had to deal with while i'm here and uh i mean i think that's what a lot of vets are feeling as well because uh but it honestly like through wsp it helped me deal with that yeah dude through the other veterans around me that are doing great things it helped me deal with that we just sit down and talk about it through that community oh yeah dude i mean sorry yeah i just no dude trust hell i'm writing my freaking personal statement for law school on imposter syndrome yeah so like trust me i get it and like (laughs) I don't know, man. Like, I, I think one of the best examples in combating that comes from probably like the most American American alive right now, like yeah. Johnny Kim. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, I, there's like a quote from him where he talks about like, if you're feeling imposter syndrome, it means you're going in the right direction. And yeah. I think that's like one of the most like profound, like just statements about that. Cause yeah. I mean, look at where we are right now. It's yeah. just like, you're in classes with some of the most intelligent people in the country, but okay. like, yeah. you're going toe to toe with them. So I don't know, it's like, I had conversations with some of the the coolest professors. I think I I, w- I mean uh, Brian Green, David Valancourt. Yeah, yeah, like I just absolute yeah. love David Valancourt. Yeah, man. I mean, that's what I'm yeah. saying, dude. Like just absolute geniuses, and yeah. you get us be in a classroom with 30 other people, and you know, sit down and ask these people questions, yeah. and it's it's honestly like you know a lot of vets. I honestly I think what's uh, sep- what helps out a lot of vets or not helps out but like kind of separates a lot of vets is that just decision to try. Yeah. The decision to do it. Yep. I think once you make the decision that you want to come to like Columbia or something else that separates you from 90% of the rest of the people. Exactly. You know, and then all from there you just have to do the work to get in. Yeah. Like write the essay, you know, fill out the application. And honestly, I had a buddy um, who started the semester after me and he I called him and I was like dude I know you're th- you're thinking about reenlisting I was like apply to Columbia yep I was like just do it like just apply yep and I was like if you want to stay in stay in but if you apply and you get in and you you know you want to get out then you have an option Hell yeah. and he's like okay I'll do it and he made the decision to do it he's like I'll fill out the application I'll do whatever but really like it was more of a yeah okay and he got in and he's here and now he's doing great things and now he gets paid to go to college (laughs) and that's the thing is like it just just make the decision to do it yeah and try and you know uh and you know use your peers use your you know your friends that are here or people that you might know reach out to mill vets read grayson and mill vets anybody that's coming in any veteran that's coming Mm -hmm. in that has questions i know you can reach out to mill vets there's so many resources um for vets out there and your peers is i think one of the best ones yes and uh, you mentioned professors before, and this is a big one too that yeah. I've seen a lot of veterans that come to academia, like they're, they're not very aware of it, but like office hours is a huge thing. And like you yes. mentioned two professors by name before, and David Valancourt happens to be a professor I've taken myself. And, yeah. You know, I'm sure you have been to his office hours yeah. and you can attest to what that experience is like. So, do you mind just talking about some of your experiences of office hours just yeah. so? people can kind of understand what that's like so um that yeah office hours is one of the the biggest life hacks i think when it comes to coming to college it's a cheat code uh, man <laughs> because yeah no like you uh like sometimes your tas or your professor will sit there and walk through the problems with you you know like you're struggling with something they're going to walk through it with you now a lot of vets kind of get hard-headed and they're like oh i can do this i'm going to muscle through it i don't need help uh but and really what it is is uh you know use your resources again and i've gone to so one of the classes i took for computer science mm-hmm. uh, I went to office hours a lot because I, I was having a hard time with it uh, it, was a, it was a rough one for me I didn't I didn't really uh, the information didn't click with me as much as the other stuff does of course. and um, I would go to office hours uh, repeatedly just trying to get help 
And when it came time to the, take the final, my final exam, um, I ended up getting one of the questions fairly wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had messed up an earlier calculation, which then bled into everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, and the professor gave me like, uh, the, I think the question was 10 points. He gave me nine out of 10 mm -hmm. uh, for that question because, and wrote a note on it was like, I've seen you in office hours. I know you know how to do this. You know, you just messed up a calculation, but other than that, you're great. It is fine. Yep. You know, and so even, and that's not going to happen every time, but like getting that face to face with the professor is a, and, or the TAs and getting that help with your work. It made, helped me understand it a lot better. It uh, allowed me to ask questions that, you know, I wouldn't really ask in a classroom space. But at the end of the day, also, it really helped me out when I needed it mm -hmm. uh, on a final where he's like, yo, I know who you are. Exactly. And I know you know what you're doing. And, yep. you know, and that helped me out a lot. So the best lesson I ever learned in office hours is failures are the catalyst to learning. Yeah, yeah And that professor is right in my law school recommendation. So it's <laughs> yeah. just like, because trust me, I did not do well. Yeah. I, I had a similar experience. But yeah, man, it's like, I don't know. It's just, it's interesting to see like how, you ever seen The Matrix before? I've seen The Matrix, yeah. All right, so there's a scene in The Matrix too. I use this when I, I teach at Warrior Scholar, but I think it's applicable to every single veteran that gets out of the military and yeah. has their GI Bill. So in The Matrix 2, Neo walks into this hallway that's lined with green doors. They go, The hallway goes on for friggin' forever. Mm -hmm. If you're watching this and you haven't seen The Matrix 2, watch The Matrix spoiler 2. Spoiler alert. Like, spoiler alert, it, it has nothing to do with anything, but it's just a very, <laughs> like, it's a nice analogy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, but like, I find that like those are doors to opportunity and that's what it's like to be an enlisted veteran yeah. with your GI Bill yeah. and getting out of the military. It's just like, what door do I want to walk through? Is it a door to positive generational change through education? Do I want to attend a boot coding boot camp? Yeah. Do I want to take a gap year and just like blow out of the back of my Toyota Tacoma? Yeah. I don't know. It's just like, there's, there's so many opportunities and it's just having your eyes open to them yeah. is one of the most important parts of separating from the military. I think that's one of the biggest traps, uh, but going back to when you said like, what would I tell uh, like an E4 that's saying there, like uh, one of the biggest traps I think a lot of these vets fall into, and I've seen my friends that were thinking about getting out and decided to ultimately re-enlist, they fall into is um, they're like, oh, I don't know what I want to do, so I'm not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. And that's like, you do not need to know what you need to want to do nope. by when you get here. Nope. You know, you have a few years to figure that out. Yep. And even then you probably still have a few more on top of that. Yep. You know, graduating with a degree in general is going to get you uh, open up a ton of opportunities mm -hmm. for you. And, but like being here, you have such a wide breadth of classes and other things that you can learn and, uh, and like dabble in. I had a friend here, she, uh, she said, for her first year, she just wanted to take it, as many different classes as possible to find the one thing she wants to do or one thing she likes to exactly. do. And uh, and that you know, so like you don't need to have it figured out. Not you too. don't need to have a plan. Or I mean, have some modicum of a plan. Yeah. But you don't need to have everything, like, already ready to go mm -hmm. when you get here. You know. Dude, I changed majors four times. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You can change. I figure majors. it out eventually. Yeah. It's like, hey, it turns out I like political science. Cool. A free speech law is kind of my exactly. thing. But I wouldn't have found that out without just being like, I'm gonna take a class on this and see. My what buddy happens. that's doing journalism started with environmental science and realized he hated math, yep. and then he switched to journalism, mm -hmm. and he loves it. And he's gonna and get he's to meet so Max Verstappen, and I'm very jealous of that. Yep. He was probably in Austin last weekend for the USGP, <laughs> and I. I'm very jealous. I don't want to stay on topic, but still, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's always interesting, like, looking back on it. It's like the... I always try and refer to military service like driving a car, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, when you drive a car, you have to look in your rearview mirror sometimes in order to, you know, safely change lanes. And yeah. for a lot of veterans, I think that that rearview mirror symbolizes their military experience. They're, they need to have their eyes on the goal, which is the road. And if you focus on that mirror too long, you can steer your car off course and crash. But... I don't know, coming to school or coming to any university, getting out of the military, it's like you, you end up meeting dudes like you who had their eyes on that path and were still able to glance up at that rear view mirror, yeah. and, you know, use their turn signals and whatnot. So, yeah, man, I really appreciate you coming out and sharing your story yeah. with us today. And, you know, there's going to be somebody who watches this and they're just like, shit, I can do this too. Yeah. You know, just cussing it, but like, look at our audience here. Like, this is the type of stuff that, you know, folks like me when I was a pissed off E5 getting out of the yeah. military needed to hear. So, dude, I appreciate, appreciate you, you so out, much, man. man. Yeah, absolutely. It's always good Thank to see you, you dude. Yeah.